A very good morning students, we are back with our regular class lecture and the subject is Mining Geology and we are continuing our underground mining methods and this is part 3 video and so far what we have seen is what is underground mining, why we should go for underground mining, what are the primitive methods of underground mining like rat hole mining, then if the ore body is horizontal and thick then you can go for room and pillar method, if the ore body is horizontal but thin then you can go for long wall mining method. And if the ore body is inclined thick with competent country rock, then you can go for sub level stopping method. And if the ore body is inclined thin and competent country rock, then you can go for shrinkage stopping method. In our today's video, we will try to cover three headings. One is inclined ore body with incompetent country rock, massive ore body, and irregular ore body. Okay, so let us get into the heading. The first one is sub level caving method. So, this sublevel caving method is preferred for an inclined ore body with incompetent country rock. So, you can see here this is a sketch of this sublevel sub caving method where you can see there are so many tunnels driven and or caves driven and there are blast holes are there which is drilled then it is blasted and it is recovered. So, this is the generalized working of this sublevel caving. So, let us see uh, the text of that. That is the sublevel caving is a large scale underground mining method used for extracting thick steeply dipping ore body with relatively weak surrounding rock. So compared to the ore body if the country rock is weak then we can go for this method of mining where all the work that is done mainly on the ore body only the country rock is used to move the ore body from the ore to the surface right. So this is what its general concept the ore body is divided into sub level at a regular vertical interval so the term level comes when the ore body is having a strike right so as it is mentioned that the ore body is inclined so there will be strike so there are tunnels driven parallel to the strike of this formation which is called as the sub levels and the spacing between the sub levels can be in the range of say 5 to 10 meter and that is also according to the strength of the ore body okay so what they are going to do in this is the ore is drilled and blasted from each sub level as the ore is removed the overlying waste rock caves in to fill the void allowing for continuous extraction. So they are going to drill here they are going to keep a blast uh, drill a blast hole and blast it and they are going to remove the ore body from here. So as the ore body is removed the rock that is above the ore body is called as hanging wall that is below the whole ore body is called as the foot wall right so this hanging wall which is already weak in nature will try to fall in right so this is how the ore uh, minus expanding right laterally okay so this is the generalized working of this sub level caving and uh, let us see what are the advantages and disadvantages of this method so the first advantage is it is high productive and mechanization as the ore body is larger you can go for mechanization as well as the ore body is stronger so that can give support to the machines that you are going to use for the mine so it is the very first advantage the second one is that this is suitable for large steep ore bodies so when the ore body is steep we have to go for this sort of mining method okay uh, this method allows continuous and efficient operation as you know this is a larger ore body and we are going to use large amount of machines then there is no any problem of stopping and going right so this method allows you for continuous mining as there is no need of any sort of backfilling here so the mining is continuous process in a previous video we had discussed in some methods there are backfilling is required where the mining takes long time for one complete cycle right so here it is not like that it is continuous mining and the operation is efficient to remove the ore body okay so this is the third advantage the next one is low operating cost per ton so here the main method of removing the ore body is blasting and removing right so the amount that is required for a blasting and removing is just like the open quarry but the difference is it is done below the surface right so this may not require much cost so this is like it may require a lower cost for per ton of ore removed from the ore body okay and here as it is uh, inclined formation 
there is no any much dust and gas production and staying there the ventilation is quite convenient in the inclined formation this method provides a good safety and working condition for this reasons okay and this is flexible and scalable amenable to automation so as the size and orientation of the overbody is convenient we can go for automation so these are the advantages of using this method let us see what are the disadvantages in this method the first one is that significant over dilution so when you are going for blasting there will be a chance of breaking of the country rock and here in this case the country rock is comparatively weak and it is moving down the slope so there will be a probability of dilution some over loss is inevitable so some portion of the over body is in removal that is it is lost forever right so this is the second disadvantage the third one is that there will be sub surface subsidence as you know you are removing the over body and the country rock is falling in so there will be a subsidence automatically on the surface so this is also one of the disadvantage the next one is high development and capital cost so when you are dealing with automation mechanization there will be always a high cost required so that is also a disadvantage okay then, so when the over body is somewhat irregular then there is a thing called limited selectivity which means the we have to break the ore only the ore not the country rock because make breaking the country rock will cause further dilution so there should be care taken along that when the ore body is irregular okay and last thing is complex drop control requires so when you are moving dealing with the country rock as well as the ore body you have to select and prevent only removing the ore body not the country rock because both are falling into the ore bin right into the stove right or into the sub level right so we have to think and move accordingly so there is a complexity in this process so this is what a generalized idea about the sub level caving so let us see the next one that is the block caving method so the term block is replacing sub level which means so far what we have seen is a stratified rock formation which has a strike so you can go for the term level but here we are going to deal with the massive ore body that is without any proper orientation just like a layered formation okay if it is a layered formation you can go for the top high uh, so far mentioned methods you can go for that method for layered formation here the formation that is the ore body is massive so we have to go for block caving method but everything is same just like sub level caving method the only difference is that term that is sub level caving indicates you are drilling parallel to the strike here there is no strike so we are going for block caving method so you are going to select a single block you are going to blast it and you are going to remove it just like we mentioned in the sub level caving method so block caving method is a large scale bulk underground mining method used to extract massive low grade ore body that are steeply dipping and have significant vertical and horizontal extent as the ore body is massive we have to go for a selective portion go for the drill it remove it just like that this is done and this method can be applicable for a low grade mineral deposit okay the process involves undercutting of a larger section or a block of ore that a depth allow it to collapse under its own weight the broken ore is fall into the drill point below from where it is collected and transported to the surface so this it is somewhat just like your glory hole where we are going to break the bottom most portion and there is a space for it to collapse due to its own gravity when it falls down we will use to remove it from some sort of machinery likewise we are moving from bottom to top in this method of caving that is block caving method okay so let us see the advantages and disadvantages the very first advantage is that it is low operating cost per ton so just like the previous one here also the cost for per ton of removal of ore body is very less and the productivity of this is very high that is in the range of 30000 ton to 1 lakh ton per day so this is having a high productive rate this method okay the next point is suitable for large low grade ore body so even the ore body is very low the production rate is very high so that will give you some sort of economic advantage and reduced surface waste disposal so we are going to break it remove it and take it out and not dealing with the country rock here so there is a lot of reduced surface waste disposal here okay and the last point is enable mechanization and automation as the ore body is quite bigger so we can go for automation and mechanization 
So these are the, the pros of this method, that is advantage of this method. Let us see the disadvantage. The first one that is the high initial development and capital cost. When you are go for, going for mechanization and automation, there will be cost consuming, right? So that is the very first disadvantage. The second one is over dilution and lower selectivity. As the ore itself is a low grade ore and you are breaking the ore along with the country rock sometimes at the margin at least. So there will be a probability of dilution and as it is massive without forming any proper geometry, there will be some sort of selectivity. That is we have to fix the boundary up to which you have to break and up to which you should not touch. So that is required. If you miss it, there will be a larger amount of dilution happens. Okay. So that is the second disadvantage. Then third point is surface subsidence and environmental impact. So when you are going for caving method, there will be always subsidence of the surface, right? So that is also impact some sort of environmental issues that will result in some sort of disturbance to the atmosphere as well as the people around them. Okay. The next point is geotechnical and safety risk. So we are going for a block caving and we are not having any proper geometry of the rock. So when the blocks we are going to handle, that is a massive rock we are going to handle, we don't know the proper joint set and other things, right? So there can be some sort of a geotechnical as well as safety risk that will be along with that in this type of mining, okay? The last point is that only suitable for specific ore body geometry. So this method is not suitable for all sort of ore bodies, only certain type of uh, geometry of the ore body is preferable for this sort of mining method, okay? Is that clear? Okay, here is the last topic for today's discussion and that is cut and fill method. So the name implies what we are going to do. You are going to remove the ore body and we are going to fill it, fill that space with some sort of other unwanted material. That is called as cut and fill method. Okay. In cut and fill method, mining is a method where ore is extracted in horizontal slices followed by black filling the void with waste material stabilizing the workspace. So we are going to remove one horizontal portion of the ore body and we are going to backfill it. Then we are going to remove it one second and we are going to backfill it. So this type of underground mining is called as cut and fill method. Okay. So this is suitable for irregular ore body as there is no any proper orientation. You are going to see the ore body, break it down, take it out and you are going to refill it. So this is the generalized method. So the advantages for this method is that this is high selectivity and low dilution. So here you know the geometry that is it is actually irregular. So you have to fix the boundary up to which you have to break and you have to break there and you have to replace it with the base material for the support. Okay, so this is the very first advantage because there is a very low probability of dilution because you have you implying peoples to work there. So they know the difference at least they have to explain them how what to break, what to not to break. So they will break the ore body only and leave the country rock there itself. So the dilution probability is comparatively less. Then this is adaptable to irregular ore body. So when the ore body is irregular, you can go for cut and fill method. Whatever the ore strength or whatever the country rock strength, that is not a big deal. You are going to break the ore body only and you have to refill the space that is occupied by the ore earlier. So that is the second advantage. Then we have a safe working platform via backfilling. So you are going to backfill the portion which is already remote. So that will act as a support. So the safety for this mining is comparatively good. Then we have reduced surface subsidence. As we are backfilling the vacuum that is created by our extraction of the ore. So the subsidence from the surface will be reduced. And the last point is waste reuse tailing and backfilling so when you are dealing with when you are mining and you are removing the ore body you can refill the space with the waste that is occurred by the mining process so the waste reuse is an advantage for this method okay so let us see what are the disadvantages in this method the first one is this requires high operation cost because this method is completely labor oriented we cannot use much machine here so every task is based on labor's work as labor required for breaking the ore body as well as backfilling. So this is a high operative cost required method. The second one is this has a low cycle time due to backfilling step. So you have to break the rock, you have to remove the ore body and you have to refill it. Then only you can go for second cycle of breaking of the ore body. So this requires a larger time gap between the first cycle of removal of ore body and refilling and the second set of removal of ore body. Okay. 
This is the second disadvantage. The third one is that complex logistic for fill material. So when you are moving something out, you are keeping bringing something in. The logistic itself is a big problem, right? So that is the third disadvantage here. Then we have limited mechanization potentials. As the over body is irregular, we cannot go for mechanization. So that reduces the usage of mechanization here. So that is the fourth disadvantage. And the last very important disadvantage is that it is skill intensive for fill design and placement. So when you are removing the ore body, the ore body is itself irregular. So the portion what you are removed itself is an irregular space, right? So it needs some sort of skill to refill the material at that space and also that should also increase the stability of the mines. So this is a main disadvantage in this method. And if you have any doubt in this function in the comment section, we will try to explain in the upcoming video. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.